Yard. And uh, today we have uh, Dr. Mahmoud from the University of Alaska School of Medicine. He will present his uh, work. And uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Mahmoud. Um, it's still morning, isn't it? So good morning, everyone, just about. Um, so our project is based on virtual reality using a 360 video um, in the undergraduate medical setting. So that's on a ward round um, for third year students who are just about to embark on all the clinical studies after doing examinations and theory work. Um, they've had a little bit of patient contact, but they haven't quite got onto the wards and had day-to-day -day patient contact. Um, we spoke to some third years and we kind of got their ideas about, or students who are about to start third year, to get their ideas about how they felt. And I thought about how I felt before I started in third year. And I thought, um, it's not a particularly easy time. It's quite, quite a difficult time when you're expected to go on the wards and know about everything. So don't let the white hairs on my beard fool you. I'm not that old. I'm a GP trainee, but it's only been a few years since I was a medical student, or maybe a decade. Um, but my feeling, and a lot of students' feeling, was that you get presented with this. So any of you familiar with House, you'll know he's a, a very pleasant chap. And when you go into a ward, you might feel a bit lost. You might feel like you're getting told off a little bit. Um, and apologies for the next bit, but I got a thesaurus for my birthday last week. So you might feel a bit gloomy, a bit gray when you go into the ward. And you feel a bit nervous, diffident, afraid, uncertain, daunting. So I make good use of my presence, as you can see. Um, and all these negative emotions come out. Whereas what we want are our students to be feeling more confident, calm, familiar with their surroundings, feel assured. Although it's okay for them to feel a bit nervous because they're not expected to know everything and be able to, um, they're not meant to be a fully qualified doctor at that point, they've got a lot to learn. Um, so they may also feel uncertain and that's absolutely fine, but they need to feel welcome to be able to ask questions and approach people and know who to ask um, when, when certain tasks are needed. So thankfully, a ward run isn't like, like this anymore, or hopefully it wasn't ever like this, um, with everyone connected to the same stethoscope. But what a ward run is, according to Google, uh, are visits paid by a doctor in hospital to each of the patients every day. And some of you who've been to hospital may know this or have had relatives there. You'd know that the doctor, the consultant, or the senior doctor comes around each morning and takes a team around with them of junior doctors who are there to take down notes, um, and there'll also be other professionals there. So nurses may come along, physiotherapists, pharmacists, if we're lucky. It depends on if we've, how big the team is. But the junior doctors are dependent on quite a lot. They need to be there to direct the consultant where to go, give updates on the patients, and also to document in the notes. So um, all of the patient notes are um, contemporary, and the plans are all updated. And they need to be the ones who go out and tell the nurse who's looking after that patient what's going on with the patient, um, especially if the nurse isn't on the ward run with them. So, as with the guidance of the British Medical Association, um, you can see that nurses may join us on the ward round, and therefore the junior doctors need to, be, uh, need to know what's going on and be able to update the plan accordingly. And the importance of a ward round is obviously patient safety. Um, there have been papers published which show that medical errors occurring on a ward round are often the source of patient harm. So whilst it might not appear like the most drastic intervention, it's not a surgical procedure, but it's something which, if there is a breakdown in communication and there's no clear communication between the different teams involved, there can be human errors leading to patient safety being compromised. And using the GMC's first do no harm document, they do specifically say undergraduate medical ed education should continue to prepare students to appreciate the role of systems and processes in ensuring this patient safety. Uh, and therefore, the education we want to provide should hopefully help them to appreciate the system involved in a ward round and ensure patient safety on the wards when they get there. So this is what led us to using virtual reality uh, and 360 video uh, as a way of helping to prepare students for this. So as in my, my own undergraduate teaching experience of ward rounds, um, it's perfectly summed up by this slide. So as you can see, there's nothing on the slide. 
That's because there wasn't any formal teaching. Um, you'd expect there to be so, but it was kind of ad hoc. When you got on the wards, this is what you learn. And it depends on which kind of team you're with. I was in a very busy London hospital, so my first placement, I was just there alongside other seven or eight other doctors, a couple of medical students, and we didn't know what we were doing. We were lost. We kind of just followed everyone around, had lunch, came back, and got lost for the afternoon again. So hopefully, we're hoping that doesn't happen to our students going into the future. Um, and at Leicester, what we've tried to do is implement this video um, to help them prepare for these water runs. So the way we created the video is, um, it's quite, as you all appreciate, it's quite primitive um, VR technology, 360 video using Google Cardboard and YouTube VR. So we used um, GoPro to record the video. Um, the software rendered it, which was included. Um, and we posted it to YouTube as a, v as a VR, a 360 VR video. And it can easily be watched with Google Cardboard. So we had time limits on this project. Um, it involved a student, myself, and a senior staff member, Therese Bird, um, who had all the te technology to hand. And therefore, we needed to use something which was accessible, easy to use, relatively cheap, uh, and using equipment which we already had. And that's why we, we opted for um, this way of recording the video. And it involved one day of filming, uh, where we used a simulation suite at Leicester Royal Infirmary to make it as realistic as possible. Um, we had our director, seven actors who volunteered for the day for free food and drinks, and uh, non-alcoholic during the day, and um, three scripts, obviously, which we based our three scenarios around. And we tried to make it as realistic as possible with background noises, such as bleeps, telephones, chatter in the background going off, to try and bring in some distractions to the ward, as it would be in a real-life setting. And as I said, we used YouTube VR and Google Cardboard. So if people have any, well, we've got some um, headsets, which I can pass around. And you can scan in the QR codes if you have smartphones and have a go in a couple of the scenarios, if you like. Or take a photo and use them all later, if you like. Can I pass these around? Yeah. Let's pass them behind. Oh, yeah, everyone does actually have one, so yeah. If you want to use your own ones, you can do. Um, the other accessible thing about this is, as you know, 360 video, you don't have to use a headset. So students who want to use the iPads, and at Leicester, all students get an iPad when they, when they start the university, when they start the medical school. So it's available to all students um, using the YouTube app. If I open up an example here. No, it's on the screen as well, so. And well, action. It's not, it's not showing in 360 here, but you can appreciate this is the kind of scenario that we had. Hello there, Ms. Moore. Hello. Antibiotics. He's in a very fragile state. Beeping in the background for me, yes. People the using this now. If you try to make it as really difficult as possible. Only half an hour away to home. <laughs> and we've also tried to make it include distractions. So, as you might know when you watch the scenarios, um, we've got distractions such as uh, irate patients, um, irate relatives, confused patients wandering onto the ward, and nurses coming onto the ward and asking, can you prescribe this, whilst the junior doctor is meant to be concentrating on the patient at hand and documenting what should be going on at that time. So, and these are all based on my real life experiences as a foundation year doctor. So it's nothing which we've just took from the air, it's all based on, on real life. So the aim of our project, and I'll do my best destinies of child impression, question. No one really got that, that's fine. See, I'm not that old, I'm, I'm fairly young man. So, not that you're that old, you're not old. Okay, so uh, simulated, kind of simulated virtual reality, ward round, improved medical students conference, confidence, documentation, and empathy skills in a clinical environment. So the way we did this, we recruited um, in the end eight participants, and 
the day started off, the testing day started off with um, SOAP documentation. So I won't go too much into that, but it's a way of structuring the documentation um, based around a subjective, objective, uh, an assessment, and a plan, just to give the uh, documentation some structure to follow. And then we split the participants into a VR group, uh, a PowerPoint group, and a control group. So the VR group and the PowerPoint group then went on to do a pre-intervention confidence questionnaire. The VR group then went on to their simulated ward round experience using the VR headsets, as some of you are doing now. And the PowerPoint group had a simple reading exercise where they were presented with some slides and what could potentially happen on a ward round. And then after that, they had their post-intervention confidence and an empathy questionnaire. And that's when the control group came in, who had no intervention. They then went on to the live simulated ward round, which was made of 13 rowdy actors, who were um, some who were disgruntled patients, some who were disgruntled relatives, others nurses, other professionals. And they tried to make things as realistic as possible, again, with real-life distractions. And the students were expected to document findings using either the SOAP method or another method, um, which we then assessed for accuracy afterwards, ensuring that they included all the relevant important parts um, from the history and examination of the patients. And we also analyzed the survey results to see how their confidence had changed uh, pre and post intervention, and whether they felt um, it improved their empathy skills. So this is I've really covered where we, uh, based on my real life experiences at an FY1 doctor, um, and other examples of the distractions. We had a cardiac arrest call in one of the scenes, um, as well as the confused patient and the irate relative and staff member. And there are some photos from the day. Um, so there's me pretending to be a consultant. Um, we had a patient death in one of the scenarios, so it was talking um, that, that uh, base, that's what the question about empathy was based mainly around that scenario. Um, we have our student participants into grips with the documentation, and then we've got an irate relative and a nurse having to settle her down. So the results, as I said, we looked at documentation accuracy, confidence, and empathy. Um, and with documentation accuracy, we found that actually the PowerPoint learners had the highest documentation accuracy. Where VR was concerned, um, it's not very different from the control. Very, very similar. And we did exclude an outlier from the VR learner results, and this outlier, unfortunately, took some time to get to grips with the video, was disorientated, because unfortunately, when he started the video, it um, placed him in a position where he wasn't seeing anything going on, and he didn't let us know until we kind of get, got to the end of time that he hadn't seen much of the video, which was unfortunate. Um, but we still had um, three other participants in the VR group compared to the, the two participants in the other two groups. So we still had a, a good number of participants to um, compare with. However, student confidence, we found that 100% of the VR learners um, reported that they were more confident. They felt that they knew what responsibilities were expected of them, and they felt that they could understand and be able to cope with more distractions that could come up on the ward. So that's a, a very good sign. Um, and one of them imported, reported feeling more confident in actually assisting a doctor. So remember, these are, do these are students who haven't been on the wards really much and they are now expected to be on the ward every day. And before going on their first day, um, one student felt that they could actually, they were prepared enough to assist a doctor with whatever they would ask them to assist with. Um, and as you'd expect, I think the vast majority reported VR to be an engaging way of learning. Um, unfortunately, the one student who reported it as not being engaging was the one who wasn't able to get to grips with um, how to use it. So we're mainly concentrating on VR, but PowerPoint did have its uses, although um, the results were split. Um, in terms of responsibilities and distractions, it was a 50-50 split. And again, one reported that they would feel confident assisting a doctor. However, none of the students who used the PowerPoint actually found it engaging. So empathy, this was a difficult one, and I think that's partly our fault with the way we actually phrase, I think, the empathy questions. And looking at some of the presentations which have already been on today, um, I think our thinking was after this and from today that empathy is something which 
in a 360 video, it will probably be best suited to actually sing from the patient's point of view rather than a junior doctor or medical student's point of view. Um, so this is something which we'll look at doing in the future, but I don't think it's something we can really gauge properly with uh, the viewpoint of a medical student um, in the video. However, 100% felt that they, the VR experience did help them pre to prepare for the real-life simulation, and 75 agreed that it would that improve their empathy uh, and understanding of empathy of patients and relatives. Um, as I said, 100% of the VR users did report that it increased their confidence. So that's the main, main positive result from this, that it does improve student confidence uh, when they go into the wards. With increasing empathy, as I said, I think there's some limitation in the way we questioned um, this and actually used the resource to promote empathy. Um, we also thought that because the students had just experienced a live ward round before they, did the, they completed the empathy questionnaire, this may have actually had a bearing on how they felt about it compared to the VR, because the live ward round is obviously tangible, it's real life, it's more immersive than VR can be, uh, and therefore it may have, ha may have had an effect on these results with empathy. So future uses, um, I mean, nice little word cloud, and most of the suggestions for future uses are surgical procedures, um, clinical scenarios, and anatomy teaching and dissection. So with surgical procedures, obviously, VR needs to be interactive. With the uh, technology we use, that's not possible. You could, we can view surgical procedures, and this has been done at Leicester before, with a gallbladder removal, um, but it's not something which we can practice with Google Cardboard. Um, in postgraduate medicine, this has been um, uh, looked at, especially when it comes to knee arthroscopy um, and procedures such as that. So there is existing work on that. Um, clinical scenarios, that's to do with more complex clinical scenarios. So, for example, specific things in specialties such as um, examining and taking a history from a difficult patient in a GP setting or examining a, a pregnant lady and how to do that specifically. And anatomy teaching and dissection is something which we are looking at at Leicester now. Um, we're very big on anatomy teaching and dissection and there are always at least, if memory, at least two sessions per module that include a dissection and looking at um, real life pro sections at least. Um, so we're looking at doing, we've, we've actually started doing a, an introduction session into the dissecting room where the first years come in, um, they have their introduction session to the dissecting room, but they don't actually go in and dissect anything for another two months. So we've looked at doing a refresher video in 360 so that they can watch it in their own time before they come back for their actual first dissection and feel more confident and engage more. Because the dissection room is essentially many people, eight to 10 students around one cadaver, and if you're not feeling confident, it's very easy to just let yourself float in the background and not actually learn something. So we're hoping that the students will feel more confident with that video, and they can therefore engage more in the dissection and get more from it. Um, another use which we've looked at are actually examinations um, in the dissection room, where at the end of the year, students have a formative examination on identifying different parts of prosections and, and identifying um, what flag A corresponds to, what flag B corresponds to. And in, in terms of logistics and also in terms of actually being able to give good repeatable practice to the, the students, we feel that a, incorporating this into a 360 video is something which we uh, would like to do in the very near future. So rounding up, from our results, we found VR to be engaging in learning ward rounds, um, although it didn't help to improve the SOAP documentation. It helped to improve student confidence and preparedness for the unexpected challenges they may face on the ward. Um, we need to look a bit more at the empathy side of things. Um, and also, in terms of technical and price issues, we had the equipment there, um, so it's not insurmountable. <coughs> but in the long run, once we've invested in the equipment, if we wanted to, to do more in-depth interactive VR, in the long run, there's less costs uh, associated with it, but obviously the, the initial investment is needed there for the um, recording equipment and, and the processing of that. And we need to watch the outliers, so that's a fault of our own. We need to give a bit more clear direction on how to use the VR, so when we make this available to our third year students, we will run a short video and um, demonstration on Blackboard, available as a link where they can watch that first and read about how to use it before they can use it in their own time. And 
as I think you see from all the presentations today, it's a new spark to learning. Um, and in medicine, it can be applied to, as we, saw, as we saw from the word cloud, it can be applied to very many uh, different aspects of medicine and undergraduate medical education. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to take those. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Why do that? Can I ask you a question? It's a yeah, fantastic sure. presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you think that using the technology that you've brought in, will that sort of replace shadowing? You know, when you've got junior doctors. Okay, so, so using the te I'm just repeating for the sake of people listening. So, using the technology that I've just um, showcased, do I feel that will replace shadowing of doctors? To an extent, yeah. To an extent. Um, it could do. I think it could do. Uh, the thing about shadowing is there's two parts. So there's the observation part, and I think in terms of the observation, it could potentially, I think, work with it rather than replace it. Um, the reason being that if students are simply shadowing using VR, when they get onto the ward and they're expected to do a bit more, they'll feel out of their depth. So in order to help, it can help them to feel a bit more confident with the shadowing part of it, but I still think shadowing face-to-face -face is needed. And it also presents the opportunity for students to interact with the patient and also with the consultant and, or the senior. And the senior will often ask questions, um, which I know when I did it. Even now, if I'm on the ward and, and they ask me questions, I feel like I'm on the spot and I feel nervous. But it's all part of um, practice and dealing with those questions because students will get examined with Viva questions and, and patients will ask questions which are weird and wonderful and they have to be able to deal with it on their toes. That's the job of being a doctor. So, in answer to your question, I'd say no, I don't think it will replace, but it can work with the shadowing process and helping to educate and make students feel more confident. Thanks. Yes? Um, one of the slides you talked about the success compared to the pathway, VR scores lower. Yeah. Do you think that might be because the techniques that you use or the things you learn from VR production could, could improve that um, experience? Yeah, so you said that the the PowerPoint learners showed that they had higher documentation accuracy than the... Yeah, so that was with documentation accuracy. It was higher in the PowerPoint learners than it was in the VR learners. So do I feel that the technology involved in more using PowerPoint has... Well, the PowerPoint is more established yeah. as a tool, and people know how to use it, and people know how to both be created and to use it. Okay. Okay, so as PowerPoint is established, do I feel that VR, once it becomes more mainstream, would be able to get up to those higher results of documentation accuracy as PowerPoint? Um, I think it could. I don't see why not. I think as we get used to it, everyone's now, PowerPoint's everywhere. Um, it's omnipresent. It wasn't probably like 15 years ago, as much as it is now. Um, as people learn to use VR, I think definitely it has its use, but I think what we learned from our experiences, a combination of PowerPoint and or combination of written words alongside the video or on, on, overlaid on the video might actually prove useful um, because, as you know, there's different types of learners in education and reading is an important part as well as becoming immersed within the actual environment um, and seeing things visually. Um, being able to read and write helps aid uh, memory as well, so I think um, it could it could score highly, but I think using them together is actually the best way to go about it. And overlaying text on a VR video would be um, the next step, and that's what we're trying to do um, before we actually bring out this video for our students. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. You mentioned, I think you said I was acting as the consultant or something in one of the oh yeah, yeah. one of the pieces, and I think my that's through. Have you managed to engage, um, I don't know whether it's where you are in your career, but have you managed to engage other people in the team, consultants and registrars to get engaged in this as well as the students? Yeah, so have I been able to, as, as I acted as a consultant in one of the scenes, was I, have I been able to get any seniors such as consultants engaged into yeah. being part of this? Um, this was our first step and the plan was to, to take this to the phase two lead and say, 
this is our project, this is what we'd like to do, this is what we'd like to bring into the curriculum for the third years. And he said, it sounds great, but get it done, and then we'll think about it. So I think what we've done is we've tried to get it complete, we've tried to get some results from it, and we have now discussed with some consultants. So I'm speaking with one of the consultants at Leicester Royal Infirmary, who is in obstetrics and gynecology, um, with any uses she might have it. So I'm meeting her next week. Um, so it's opened some doors to be able to show consultants that we can use this. And obviously we would like to get them involved because we want to make the experience as realistic as possible. So if we've got consultants actually there, acting as themselves, what they're doing in real life, rather than me being a junior, trying to be a consultant in the video, that would be more realistic. So that is our plan, and we're hoping to make more videos with them involved, yeah. Sounds really good, because I was thinking the ward round, part of it's going to be the anxiety. Yeah. But part of it's going to be that interaction between the consultant or registrar and the group of doctors, and capturing that piece Yeah, we want, we want to make the, the interaction between the juniors and the whole team and the different professionals as realistic as possible. So yes, ideally, we would have consultants there, and we're hoping that after they see this, they will be willing to participate in it and, and actually be involved in future scenarios that we make. Thank you. Um, my question is more about the, the technical aspects of how you, you implemented it. So you use uh, those headsets uh, for, for an immersive experience, but does the benefit, in your view, does the benefit come from actually having the immersive experience or simply having a video recording that is made available and that would be potentially just as good as a usual video on YouTube, or okay. the immersive yeah. part got something to play in So you're saying, uh, do I feel that, does the immersive experience of a 360 video, does it have any benefit over um, a simple 2D video, which the students could watch and potentially learn the same from? Um, at Leicester, before examinations, the students do actually get some videos based on consultations, not so much ward rounds, but consultations, um, and how to approach those with a the, with the patient. And those are black 2D videos on YouTube. Um, after discussing with the, the students in our focus group at the start, we did talk, we touched upon those videos and they felt that, they felt something more immersive would help them. They'd feel, they'd feel, they felt that that would actually make them feel like they're more in the setting rather than a fly on the wall. Um, and therefore they would actually learn a bit more from it. So I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but from the student feedback, they, I think they, they felt the, immer the immersion is, is quite important. And what we try to do in the videos is actually make it not a fly on the wall in the 360 video. We try to make it from the actual medical student's perspective. So in one of the scenarios, um, the nurse comes in and actually waves a, the drug chart in front of the camera and says, can you sign this? And that's what would happen. The student's looking, trying to concentrate on the ward round, but they actually find that the nurse is coming and giving them a, a prescription chart when they're trying to have a look at what the what the consultant and the patient are up to and trying to listen to them. So the hope is that the immersion adds to it and helps with the learning and helps to prepare them more for the distractions than a fly on the wall 2D video would. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your time. <laughs>